Hey guys, it's Digital Number BHA here bringing you a new video. So the great folks over at Zoos sent me over another one of their Z-Wave smart switches uh, for me to show you guys and for us to check out. This is the 700 series Zen 71 Z-Wave smart switch. So it's not a dimmer switch, but it does give us the ability to use in a three-way setup and only require the one smart switch to make it work. So that's pretty cool. Let's check it out. All right, so of course, as you saw on the first section of this video, you can get this switch right from the smartest house for about 28 bucks, which seems to be the best deal. Um, if you did prefer to get it from Amazon, you can, and it runs for just over 30 bucks. Uh, so not a whole lot more. If you're more comfortable with purchasing from Amazon, then that's certainly an option as well. Let's do a quick run through of everything we're gonna cover in this video. Uh, for starters, we're going to unbox the device. Uh, once we do that, of course, we will uh, get that switch installed in the wall. Once we have it installed, then we are ready to get it added into SmartThings, because that's what I use for all my Z-Wave uh, devices. After that, we'll kind of go over the configuration options that we have available to us within SmartThings. After that, we'll get it added into Home Assistant. And lastly, I'll show you what that looks like in action. So let's get started. All right, so let's get this thing unboxed. Uh, so if we uh, take a look at the outside of the box here, it's a pretty small form factor uh, package. It's in there standard black with green lettering. Uh, as I already stated, this is not a dimmer switch. It is just your standard on off switch. It does support three way switches uh, with just this single smart switch. So that's pretty cool. I like how they list out all of the QR codes for the various uh, smart hubs, uh, depending on which one you are trying to get it set up with. They have instructions for each of those. So that's pretty cool. But in the box, it comes with instructions. And it even has sticker labels for the wires, that way you don't get confused whenever you're unplugging them from your existing uh, wall switch. But as you can see, it's a pretty small form factor switch. I have another regular toggle switch here. It's a little bit deeper than that, but not too much, so that's pretty cool. It's got the, the line, the load, the traveler for your three-way devices, of course, and then your neutral. And this will require the neutral wire, so you will need that white wire hooked up. But that's pretty much it that comes with this package. Uh, again, like I said, it's got those QR codes there uh, for you to uh, scan, depending on which hub or device you want to get this thing configured with. Um, so that's pretty awesome. Makes it really easy to get this thing set up. All right, so just to kind of go over some of the specs uh, on this particular switch, uh, the Z-Wave frequency, pretty standard, 908 megahertz. Uh, the switch power on this is 120 volts, uh, so don't try to use it on anything bigger than that. It does uh, give you maximum loads uh, for the various types of lights, so 960 watts on the incandescent, 150 watts both LED or CFL bulbs, and uh, three amps on the fan motors as well. Uh, the Z-Wave range has up to 200 feet line of sight. Uh, so uh, you don't wanna have it too far away from your other Z-Wave devices that uh, are repeating that Z-Wave signal. And then obviously uh, needs to be installed indoors, uh, probably not designed to be used outside. So uh, wanna make sure you're keeping it somewhere inside where it's dry, uh, that way moisture's not getting in and all that. Let's move on to the next step and we'll get this thing installed. All right, so basically I'm going to install this in uh, my kind of guest room. It's actually my oldest daughter's bedroom, but 
she's away at college and she's hardly ever here anymore. So uh, it's kind of her room slash uh, guest room when other people come to visit and whatnot. Uh, but you can see it's the standard toggle switches. So we're going to be changing it out with this Decora design switch. So we'll have to go ahead and change the other one as well. We'll just do that as part of the upgrade. It's not going to be a smart switch. In fact, this wall plate is designed to cover both my light and the fan in this room. Uh, but we don't actually have a fan in the room. We only have a light. So that second switch is not actually being used at all. All right, so here I've kind of got it, uh, the wall plate taken off, got it pulled away from the wall a little bit. Uh, so this is what we're going to be swapping out. Should go uh, pretty easily, be uh, fairly simple, I think. All right, so um, I've got the light switch swapped out with the new Zoo switch here. We'll kind of show you the wiring. You can see everything's kind of hooked up there. There's the uh, neutral wire on that side. And you can see it's already powered on. I got the little blue light down below, so it should be working. Looks like it does. All right, so both of them are hooked up now, and I've kind of got them screwed back in the wall. Turn the power on just to make sure everything still looks good. I think at this point we're ready to tighten everything down and get that wall plate put on there. All right, so here is the final uh, product. As you can see, I got the wall plate on. Everything looks good. Let's just push the switch on and off. Looks like everything is working. I think we are ready to move on to the next step and get this thing added into SmartThings. All right, so getting this thing added into SmartThings, uh, so you can add it just right out of the box and it will work just fine. But if you're looking for the advanced features uh, that you can get, uh, it will require a custom device handler. Uh, so we're going to walk through adding that device handler in there. And all of these links will be in the description below so that you can go to these pages and get all the information that you need and get it set up the way you want. But you're going to log into the SmartThings API. And once you're logged in, we'll go over to uh, My Device Handlers. You can see my other device handlers that I've already created are already there, but we're going to create a new device handler. We'll say From Code. And then here's where we're going to paste uh, this device handler. Now, this link is in their documentation, but again, I'll have it in the description below. We're going to copy that. We'll paste it in here where it says from code and then go ahead and hit create. At that point, you just want to save it and of course publish it. And if we go back over to device handlers, you should see it there in the list. There it is down towards the bottom, Zen 71, 700 switch there. At this point, we can jump over to the SmartThings app on our phone, and now we are ready to add the switch uh, to our uh, SmartThings hub. So we're going to add a device, scroll down until we find the section on Zoos. And we'll say Switch Dimmer. Kind of follow the uh, basic instructions here. Uh, the room, I'm going to list it as guest room. I don't know if that's an option, so we'll add that in here. Everything else can be the default. I'm not super worried about that. Let it do its search. It says press the top of the switch three times. That kind of puts it in a Z-Wave pairing mode. Now it's asking for us to scan in the QR code. Now the QR code is on the switch itself, but it is also on the lid of the box. Thank goodness for that, because I already had it installed on the wall and everything. All right, it's uh, found it, says successful. Uh, let's go ahead and give it a name. We're going to call it Guest Light.
And as you can see, there it is. It is now added into SmartThings. What we want to do now is we're going to go back into the SmartThings API. We'll click on My Devices. You should see it there in the list. There's Guest Light. We'll select it. We're going to do an edit on that. And make sure that we change the type from the generic Z-Wave switch to the new Zoos Zen 71 that we uh, added. There it is down towards the bottom. Say update. And now, of course, we get all the additional features and capabilities that we wouldn't get with just the standard generic Z-Wave uh, switch and smart things. All right, let's move on to the next step and we'll go over the configuration. All right, so let's go over the configuration. So here we are. Uh, let's click on Guest Light. That's the new one we just added. And right off the bat, you can see you get your on off at the top there, and then there's a section for setting a timer or a schedule. And then if we hit the three dots in the top corner and we'll do an edit, Gives us the ability to, I guess, change the name or location of that switch if we want, or even delete the device if we if we wanted to. Now if we go back and look at the actual settings, and this is where you get all the advanced options. Uh, so you have paddle orientation, uh, which of course by default up is on, down is off, but you can change that up if you would prefer. LED indicator. So I usually like to have it on when the switch is off because it kind of uses that LED light as kind of a uh, night light or a way to see that switch in the dark. So I kind of like that feature, but you could always have it on or have it turn on whenever the switch is on. There's a couple of different options there. You could change the color of the uh, LED light. Uh, so by default, it's blue. I kind of like the idea of having it white. So I think I'm going to change mine to white. And then you have the brightness. Uh, so again, by default, it's 60%, but you could go up to uh, 100 if you wanted to, or even turn it down some. I like 60. That's kind of a, a, a good spot right there. I don't see a reason to change that. Now, as far as behavior after power outage... I just uh, prefer to have it just restored or whatever the last status was. I, I think that's a pretty much a, a good option. And then if you had it in a three-way switch setting, then you can change the options there. Again, since I'm not using it that way, I don't think that part really matters. Under relay control, you can uh, enable the paddle or disable it if you wanted to. We're gonna leave all that by default. And then of course, uh, the relay behavior, I want it to report the status, so I don't want to change that either. But other than that, that's your basic settings. You could also turn on uh, enable debugging if you wanted to, like if you were having issues or you wanted to see what was going on with it, you could enable debug logging and so you'll get a little bit more granular on the logs there. All right, but that's pretty much it on the configuration as far as the options that are available for you. Let's go ahead and move on to the next section. We'll get it added into Home Assistant. All right, so as I uh, state time and time again, adding devices, uh, specifically smart things devices in Home Assistant is super easy to do, especially if you're using the smart things integration. If we're in the configuration section of Home Assistant, if we go over to integrations and we're going to look for where we already have smart things added. And as you can see there, kind of down towards the bottom, we're going to hit those three dots and just do a reload on that. So if you look right now, it says 28 devices. When it gets done reloading, Uh, you can see it updated to 29, so of course we know it pulled in that new device. We'll click on it, and there, uh, down towards the bottom, is Guest Light. So if we click on that, we have our new switch. 
Uh, nothing special as far as the setup here goes. Uh, if we want to get it added into the Loveless, we can certainly do that as well. We'll go over here to my little test page that I have, and we'll hit the three dots, edit dashboard, and we're just gonna add a button. We'll click on button right here. Uh, this one's called switch.guest. Yep, there it is. Uh, we can change the icon if we want. So we'll say uh, MDI, uh, let's see, light bulb. Yep, that's a good one. And save that. And now we've got it added into Loveless. We're ready to go. Let's move on to the last step. We'll see it in action. All right, so here we are in the bottom corner, we have uh, the Loveless button there. And in the top corner uh, is the actual uh, image of the light. And we're just gonna kind of flip it on and off. And as you can see, it's like super responsive. Um, as soon as you push the button, it's making the change. So it's exactly what we wanted. It's working out great. That's the end of the video, guys. Um, I mean, overall, this was a pretty easy setup. I mean, nothing special as far as changing out that light switch. We were able to change the wiring just exactly how it was on the existing switch to the new switch without any issues. Came right up, was able to get it added into SmartThings, and as well as get it added into Home Assistant without too much trouble. If you haven't had a chance, jump over to Zoo's website. Uh, and see what other switches and items they have available. They got different sensors and all kinds of different stuff. As well as checking out the Smartest House. They have tons of smart home gear. Not just Zoo stuff, but other stuff as well. Uh, so you'll want to see what all they have uh, to offer on their site as well. As always, I want to thank everybody for donating to my Buy Me Coffee link. Every little bit helps. If you haven't had a chance, jump over to the Spring Merchandise page and check out all of my Burns Home Automation merchandise. And if you're interested in VPN service, check out IP Vanish. I'll have a link in the description below so that you can check it out and see what deals they currently have running. And if you're interested in buying and selling stock or maybe cryptocurrency, check out Robinhood. I'll have a link in the description below. And if you sign up with that link, you and I both will get a free share of stock. As always, if you like the video, please subscribe to my channel. If you have any questions or comments, hit me up in the comments below. And if there are any videos out there that you would like to see that I don't already have out there, let me know in the comments as well, and I'll see if I can't get something put together for you guys. Otherwise, I'll see you guys around.